Welcome to this podcast series on the Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. Are you wondering how deep tech startups move out of the lab and successfully to market? Well, then this series may help to address some of your questions. I'm your host, Nino Zortumia, stepping in for your usual host, the amazing Ifa Mangan. And in this series, I interview technology experts from fascinating thematic areas, including space, energy, health, and quantum. In each episode, we will meet with a European Innovation Council, also known as the EIC Program Manager, and listen to their experiences scaling up European deep tech. In case you haven't heard of it, the EIC is Europe's flagship innovation program supporting research-based tech projects and game-changing tech companies or tech startups. Today, we shall be talking about circular economy and delving into the exciting innovations designed by two EIC accelerator beneficiaries. Did you know that by transitioning to a circular economy, we could cut global greenhouse gas emissions by 9 0.3 0.3 billion metric tons annually by 2050. This reduction is equivalent to taking more than 2 billion cars off the road each year. Here to talk about this fascinating topic, we welcome Francesco Matteucci, EIC Program Manager for Advanced Materials for Energy and Environmental Sustainability, Johanna Bade, CEO of a company Traceless, developing materials competitive with those of conventional plastics and bioplastics while being compostable under natural conditions. And last but not least, Antoine Chaleur, General Manager and Commercial Director at Rossi, a company offering innovative solutions for recycling and revalorization of raw materials in the photovoltaic industry. Let's start with Francesco. Welcome to our podcast, Francesco. Uh, Shall we begin with uh, rehashing the importance of these innovations? And could you tell us where we currently are in promoting and realizing a truly circular economy? Thanks, Nino. Good morning to everybody. I would say that we are we are starting uh, with a good speed, but in my opinion, not enough. Circularity means uh, that we have to rethink the way in which everybody lives. So we need really a full approach, not only in terms of redesigning everything, the devices, whatever the packaging it is, and all the other kind of things. Because only if in the future, and I hope the future will be really soon, we will be able to do what is called safe and sustainable by design approach. That means already starting considering when we design things, how we will make the circularity out of it. So no waste, second life, more lives of everything, then we will increase and speed up the development of really the circular society because we need the combination of technologies. And today we will listen to wonderful two examples of technologies that we are funding in EIC, but we will need not only technology and science, but we will need companies to scale it up. We will need money, so investors, but we will need policy, so the right policies. For example, European Commission set up the circular economy action plan, but we will need citizens. We will need people to understand that. So we need to train the people, to educate them, to start from the schools, to increase the knowledge, the need, because it's a need. Circularity, it's something that we must implement for improving the quality of our life, but also to make what is the really sustainable development. That means assuring that the future generations will have our same opportunities. We don't have to create waste. We have to create a circularity out of everything. Great. Thank you, Francesco. Absolutely agreed. Speaking of companies and their engagement in the field, I would like to turn to uh, Johanna, uh, who is a co-founder at Traceless, which, by the way, has 100% female founding team. Uh, Johanna is also an EIC ambassador, so it's a pleasure to welcome you to the podcast, Johanna. Could you please describe to our listeners what your company Traceless is all about, uh, how it contributes to the circular economy, and what positions the company uh, at the heart of circular economy? Thank you, Johanna. Hey, no, thanks so much for having me. Um, Traceless is a circular bioeconomy startup from Germany. And what we do is that we produce a novel material, a so-called biomaterial, that is holistically sustainable alternative to conventional plastics and bioplastics. So it can be further processed like conventional plastics, but it remains being a natural material. So that means it can be circular in the natural, in the bio circle. Francesco just mentioned that we need products that by their design are safe and sustainable. And this, our traceless material is a material that allows company to design their products 
for the biological cycle without leaving any trace in the environment. So it's particularly um, meant for products that cannot or are not being recycled in the technical recycling cycles. So what we're currently doing with, for example, um, glass, paper, but also plastics. Thank you, Johanna. Could you talk to us about your journey with Traceless as you're a founder? Uh, maybe you could tell us your thoughts on the hands-on approach of the EIC. And uh, do you feel that EIC support has helped you attract private funding to get the company more deeply into the market? Absolutely. We founded Traceless about three years ago and knew from the beginning that we will be a producing company. And that means that we need quite large investments in order to scale up our production. So really building brick and mortar production side. And the EIC grant helped us absolutely to fund this scale up, to fund the company. We are today over 40 employees that help us to bring our products, our materials to market. And of course, obtaining the EIC grant was also a great uh, argument for the VC funding that we just obtained recently to now scale up to first industry production scale. And it is definitely also a seal of excellence, not only for investors, but of course, also for our customers. That is wonderful. Glad to hear that. Best of luck, Joanna. Now let's turn to Antoine, who is actively working towards improving environmental practices in the renewable energy sector and is a general manager at Rossi. Antoine, welcome to the podcast. Could you please introduce us to the work of Rossi and um, tell us a little bit about its practical applications? Oh, Nino, thank you for the invitation. You know all that uh, the photovoltaic energy uh, will become a major energy source in Europe in the coming decades. We install more and more PV panels in Europe. It's good because it's a low CO2 uh, emission uh, source uh, of energy. But as more people know now, it requires a lot of material resources. And when it becomes a major energy source, it means even more materials to produce these solar panels. So we need to find solutions to reduce the amount of materials needed in the new panels. And we need to find solutions to recover the materials that are embedded in these panels. And that's what we do at ROSI. So at ROSI, uh, we have two main activities uh, to recover uh, these materials from the PV industry. One activity is during the manufacturing of solar panels. So there is a big loss of uh, high purity silicon. Silicon is a base material of uh, most of the solar panels installed worldwide, and we have a solution to recycle a massive loss of material during this manufacturing part. And the second activity we have is at the end of life of solar panels. At this end of life, we develop solution to recover all the materials that are embedded in these panels. This means we can bring back these materials to the PV industry or other industries in Europe. And is very important as some of them, especially silicon, are critical raw materials for the European Union, which means that they are very important material uh, to uh, develop and further uh, uh, produce uh, solar panels or uh, microelectronics devices based on this material. So we need to have new sources of this material in Europe. And the best way to do it is uh, through circular economy. Thank you for that, Antoine. Very interesting. Now, uh, Johanna has just rehashed that the ESC support has given her company more possibilities to secure more uh, funding. Has that been the case for you as well? You could tell us about your journey uh, at Rossi and uh, maybe you have witnessed some of the company's biggest achievements ever since the uh, ESC support has become available. Yes, de definitely the EIC support was invaluable for Rosie. So Rosie, we are, I'm sure it's the same for Traceless. We are a deep tech company, which means that it takes years to develop the technologies that we are using now at industrial scale. So it took years and we needed to find investors able to take the time before getting the money back from their investment and having the support of the EIC fund uh, was invaluable for us. And since we got the funding from EIC, we had the possibility to find private investors uh, to invest with EIC in our uh, company. And we transformed what was a 
deep tech R&D startup, Rosie, maybe three, four years ago, into a real industrial company now. Uh, and I think our biggest achievement since the grant we received uh, from EIC was to become this industrial uh, company. Uh, we were able to finance our first uh, industrial plant. Uh, we found the best location to do it. We built the site. Uh, we ordered equipment and make them work at much, much larger scale than what we used to do before. We hired the people uh, to, to run this plant and to improve all the processes. And all of that, it took only 18 months. So it was an incredible journey uh, over the past uh, two years at Rossi. And these steps uh, for this first plant are uh, very strong pillars to expand our activity now uh, from one recycling line uh, for end-of-life solar panels in France towards several lines in Europe uh, that we are currently developing. So yes, EIC was the, the base of our industrial development. Wonderful to hear that. Thank you, Antoine. Now, Francesco, to go back to you, you just mentioned in the beginning the engagement of all stakeholders is necessary to really make circular economy possible. Would you please um, like to further detail on that and also explain uh, the hands-on approach of the EIC, uh, which we also mentioned with Johanna? Could you tell us uh, what it truly really means and how is it helping companies in circular economy to successfully bring their product to the market, like with the cases of Traceless and Rossi that we discussed today. Thank you, Nino, for the question. Yes, I will uh, in a few minutes try to describe the meaning of this hands-on approach of the of the EIC. That is one of the novelties of the EIC. On top of the possibility to have the grants funding as well as the equity funding, but the hands-on approach means that we really work with the projects on their contents. We really try to facilitate their innovation journey. That means bringing their technology from the lab to the market and really to create products to go in the direction of having what is called MVP, that means minimal viable product. But we are the only agency that really fund the whole innovation journey from really scientific innovation in the labs, in the mindset of the scientists. We help them to understand how to make the exploitation, how to make the money out of it, how to have a social economic impact. And circular economy is an example. Uh, this month is a month of communication on circular economy of EIC. What does it mean? It means that we went to exhibition that is called a commando to share with our companies the possibility and how difficult it is in the circular economy to put around the table all the stakeholders. So one example of what we do, we bring our companies in front not only of investors, but also of potential customers and also of potential other scientists that may help them in developing the proper way to sell the product. We make an example. Joanna wants to make a biocompostable material. She has to do tests to deep and dive in which conditions their materials will be biocompostable. And we can help them in connecting with the certified bodies that can make the analysis. We can help them in discussing with the scientists how to decompose the material, how to make it completely out, let me say, of the old waste mentality and to put inside the circular mentality. We can speak with Antoine to connect him with the big utilities that luckily, in the, or also private customers that luckily installed gigawatts of PV panels to know how they will recycle it to allow them, for example, to design in the future new kind of panels that can increase their recyclability. Because once again, to conclude, the circular economy needs an ecosystem, needs all the actors around the table. And in a way, hands-on for the EIC means not only providing money that is grant and equity, but also providing smart money to our beneficiaries. That means to help them once again to accept Accelerate, they are going to the market with their scientific innovation because we need to run, to run fast in the circular economy. There is a strong need to push and the mentality to open also the citizens' mentality, the education. So, for example, we do training to our, let me say, future scientific entrepreneur, but we also help them once they are trained to identify the best needs of their customers. This is the hands-on approach of the EIC. Thank you so much for that, Francesco. On behalf of the EIC team, I'd like to thank you all for being here with us and telling your story. This is unfortunately all we have time for today. A big thank you to our panelists, Francesco, Johanna, and Antoine for your time today. And indeed, thank you all for your efforts uh, in 
developing these fantastic technologies that could help boost a, a more sustainable economic model. And as Francesco mentioned, changing mentality around circular economy. That brings us to the end of our podcast, part of the series, The Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. Until next time.